What's happening guys? Willie here. Good old wanna go fishing. Hey, what do I use that you can actually go into a store and buy instead of it being 65 to 100 years old? Well, that's a good question. I do use a lot of new things, uh, mainly new rods. If, if I'm going to be uh, using an older reel, I don't use old rods very often because old rods, they, well, they've aged. And if something does happen, I don't really want to lose a big fish to a rod cracking into. So I just don't use them very often. But the reels, of course, obviously, I use old reels. That goes without saying. So why did I say it? Anyway, what I wanted to do was to show some of the things that I use that, yes, you, the subscriber, or you, the consumer, or you, the wannabe wanna go fishing, wanna go, wanna, those of you who want to go fishing can go in the store and actually purchase and I can tell you where I get these things and maybe you have one locally. Maybe you can get on Amazon. Maybe you can get on the computer. Maybe you can carve one out of a stick. I don't know. I don't know how talented you are. But regardless, I'm going to show you those things. There's not a lot to it. There are certain things that, yes, I do have a tendency to fall back on because they work. What we're going to do, again, is talk about the things that, yes, you, the person, the subscriber, can walk out into the store and buy and use where you're at and quite possibly catch some fish. The first thing that we're going to talk about is one of my go-tos, one of my absolute favorites. You've heard me talk about this a million times. When I go topwater fishing, the very first thing that I will pull out is a hula popper. You see that guy right there? That is an eighth ounce hula popper. That is solid black gray and white trailer tail, yellow rings around the eyes with a red mouth. Okay, I love these things. I have used them forever. I do not take them out of my tackle box because they work. Simple enough. Little short whips of the tip of the rod and bloop, bloop, bloop is all you need. And sometimes when this thing hits the water, you don't get to the second bloop before it's hit. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of sound effects in my fishing. I'm not joking. There's bloop and pow and zip and zzz, and, and there's a lot. I'm not kidding. But anyway, yes, that is the smallest hula popper. I will give you the, it's the G730, G730-02. That is the one I use. I have to drive over 60 miles to get these. Nobody, nobody has that color, the solid black around here anywhere, nowhere. Hey, the next thing that we're going to talk about is going to be something else that you hear me use a lot, but I'm going to show you real quick what that is, is the jigs that I use for using the smaller grubs and things like that. I'm going to show you real quick. One of my favorites, one of my, now excuse the box, it's been through a lot, so don't hurt its feelings. Squirt jigs. Bass Pro Shop squirt jigs. That is a 16th ounce, 1 16th ounce, 1 slash 1 6 ounce jig, squirt jig. I also use a 132nd. That's kind of my two that I go to, but 1 16th will usually be the first thing I put in there. Let's go with the next one, 1 16th ounce. Eagle claw with a sickle hook, ball head jig, usually in white with the red eye, just like you see right there. I use these for the stronger hook. They do have a stronger hook. If I'm using them for larger fish or larger baits and stuff like that, I will use these because the little wire hooks and the squirt jigs are, I haven't had one bend them completely straight yet, but I've had them bend them and had to change jigs after I've caught the fish because I just bent the thing out of whack. Just was lucky. Now, let's go on to baits. At the end of the baits, we're going to talk about these two jigs again. Okay, crappie sliders. I use these. I guess if you could say it religiously, that's where I would say it. I would use it. These things right here. I use them all the time. Sliders by Charlie Brewer. They're a little bit more girthy. Uh, they have a little bit more weight to them, but they're smaller. And I can really fling them a mile when I'm using uh, certain lines, like four pound line, six pound line, or 10 pound uh, braid, which is one of my major things on a lot of my rods is 10 pound braid. We're gonna talk about that in a minute too. Aren't you looking forward to that? Get on off the edge of your seat for your fall and break a hip. Get back in the seat. Lean back. 
I might not be talking about what you want to hear right now, but when I get to that part, then you can sit up on the edge of the seat. Just put some pillows in front of you, just in case. Anyway, crappie sliders. Okay, I'm going to talk to you. Another name that I use quite often is Bass Pro Shops, and the one in my area is not all that great. It's the smallest Bass Pro Shops in existence. I was told that by an employee of a Bass Pro Shops. So I know. It's inside information. It's probably wrong and illegal, but it's inside information. And now it's outside. So whether it's inside or outside, one way or the other, if it's a tube sock, you can put it on. It really doesn't matter. It feels the same. Anyway, Crappie uh, Max. And I'm going to show you a color that I use very much. And you're, you're going to know the name of this color, okay? Here it is. This is Threadfin Shad. All right? Threadfin Shad is what this one is. The purple and gold I just showed you, which is electric grape and chartreuse, has some sparkle and stuff in it. I call this the bluegill killer. I have caught bluegill, 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 bluegill on these guys right here. I'm telling you right now, I'm not lying to you. I wouldn't do that. But Threadfin Shad, and if you look real close at that thing, we'll focus on it. You notice that they're ridged. They're ridged. You know, like Charlie Brown shirt, ridged like that. So when you get it beat up at the end, you can actually pinch back behind the tip where it's beat up, break that end off, and slip it right back up on your jig again. And it's a little shorter, but it still, the tail and everything still functions and does what it's supposed to do. So you can get a lot of life out of those right there. Now, another Charlie Brewer that I'm going to show you real quick. This is a little bit larger Charlie Brewer, and I forgot what the technical name is. Slider double action. Okay, they're double action because they have uh, two spots in their bodies that are a little bit thinner. Okay, they're a little bit thinner, so you get more whipping action with the tail. Good bait, and this is a uh, smoke blue shad. That's another one that I catch the crappie with quite a lot, and the bass when them things are just on fire. They can't stand it. they got to have that. Now, another one I'm going to show you. Now, this is one that I use, but I will tell you now. It tries my patience. Okay? Big Bites Bait. All right? And this is also a Tennessee Shad, they call it. It has the paddle tail. All right? And it is a swimming crappie minner. Men with an R. Minner. You have to ask for it like that when you go inside. I want the minner they'll know what you're talking about. I like this bait. Only problem I have with this bait is that the shaft to which the body, the tail and everything, that little spot between the body and the paddle part of the tail has a tendency to when you cast, it gets in the hook. So there's none of this, there's just this. So you're reeling it in, it's not doing anything. That aggravates me, but they still catch fish. So the you know seventh time that you cast, it may do that. They make a lot of different colors like electric chicken which really does, it, it does, it catches fish. I'm not kidding. The electric chicken will just, I mean, wouldn't you eat something called electric chicken? I mean, come on, people, we eat crabs. Who was the first person that said that was okay? Hey, I think I can eat that. It's got armor all around it, but I'm pretty sure I can eat it. There you go. Let's get off of that real quick. Now, when I'm bobber fishing, I am not a fancy bobber fisherman. Something that floats two foot away or three from the hook. Need I say more? But I'm going to show you real quick the company. This is a, these guys are, I, I get them at, uh, at uh, Walmart. This is just one of the weighted style. This has a lead weight at the bottom end of the, uh, of the um, what is this thing called again? At the bottom of the bobber. Now I use it in this style here. Um, some people don't care for this style. I don't usually. That's why I kind of still have one in here. I use the totally round. You understand what I'm saying. It's totally round. It's orange. It looks like that. It's got a weight at the bottom. And it's this company. And you can get them at Walmart and they're really cheap. They're $1.90 something or $40 something or something like that. And you usually get three in a bag. I love those. Now, if I'm getting a little fancy and I want to be able to move the bobber quicker, lengthwise so I can get a longer leader underneath of the bobber I'll go with these guys I really like these um, they're very easy to hook obviously to the string 
to the line. Sorry, that's very unprofessional of me to say string. That's very old school. Well, my mother called it string, and it was good enough for her. You just move the spring, you slip, I don't know if you can see that, you slip the line through the little cut right there. And this way, when you want to move it, all you got to do is pull your line up, you pull up on the spring, and you just move it however you want. And I like the orange and black. The orange to me shows up better than the green. Could just be I'm getting old and somewhat colorblind. I don't know, but the orange shows up better. Okay, that's what I use. Now, hooks. Walmart again. Walmart sells these little panfish hooks. You can find them usually sitting on the shelf. Uh, they're not hanging. They're usually on a shelf in a little cardboard box. And this is what I use with the little Berkeley baits. This is a size four. They're panfish Aberdeen hooks. That's what I like to use when I am bobber fishing. I like the Aberdeen hooks because of the longer shaft. It's easy to get the hook out if, God forbid, one of these fish managed to actually get the hook way down in there. Which, I will tell you real quick, if you see your bobber swimming, but you do not see it bob, okay? If it just all of a sudden, if your bobber all of a sudden just starts going, usually that means he's got the hook down there pretty good. He just sucked it right in and barely bobbed it. Now, if it goes, and goes, Usually that's in the tip of their mouth or something and you don't have too much trouble getting the hook out. But with the Aberdeen hook in the longer shaft, it's easier, easier to get the hook out. A little bit more to grab onto. That's all I'm saying there. Okay. Oh, oh, since we're on the bobber thing, let's talk about that. These are the guys that I like to use when it comes to putting the little baits on there. They're made by Berkeley. They're little power baits. You can get them in this crazy chartreuse. You can get them in this nice little pinky shoe red kind of thing. Or you can get the white. I like using the white with the red together. Uh, the yellow I'll use if it's all I have left. I'll go that route, which here recently has been pretty good because I do have a tendency to leave the lid off and knock them over. Spinners and stuff like that. I do use spinner baits. Uh, and when I say spinner baits, I'm talking about small spinner baits. Um, rooster tails. I love rooster tails. I use those quite a bit. I think I have one. Stand by. All right, the old school rooster tail. I'm going to tell you right now, the old school rooster tail in a daggone pond full of bluegills and crappies, they have a hard time not eating one of these. Even trout. Trout, my goodness, if you find yourself in a place where there's some trout in about two and a half foot of water, rooster tail, man, that, that thing will show you something. I'm not kidding. Now, let's talk about another one real quick, MEPS. I found this bait uh, uh, actually accidentally. My kids for Christmas bought me a MEPS Trouter Kit. In that Trouter Kit was this bait here, the MEPS XD. Now that XD, from what I've been understanding, stands for extra deep. The, blade, the, the shaft goes through the blade not the blade on the outside of the shaft on the little horseshoe pivoting point. This actually is blade, you know, shaft through the blade. So what I understand stands for extra deep. So it dives where this one doesn't dive and kind of stays up high. This one will drive down. That blade's angle stays at a 45 degree angle. Now it's not really 45, it's more like a 33.7, I think. I'm not really sure. But because of the angle of the blade and the shaft going through it, it allows it to dive. I just bust the trout open with that lure right there. Now, it may not work in the part of the world you live in, but for me in Virginia, in the rivers and the creeks, it works really well. I'm not kidding. Got no reason to lie to you. None of these people are sponsoring me. None of them. Not a single one. Nope. Not a call, not a how you doing, Willie? Great job. Nice channel. Enjoy what you do. Nah. They don't need to. Why should they? They've already made a name for themselves. MEPS has been around twice as long as I have. Line. I use a lot of line. Not string. Line. Here is one of my favorites. Trout Magnet SOS. I cannot begin to tell you how much I enjoy using this line. It's good stuff. I've never had a bad batch of it and I use it a lot. Now, another one that I've recently discovered that I like out of a lot of the monofilaments that I use. Hold on. 
I think the Duke boys just went by. A lot of the line that I like to use and that I have used through the years, trilene being one of them, I used to use it quite often. I use trilene, XL, with the extra smooth. Um, I used to love that stuff. And I still have some and I still do use it, but I actually use it now more for leaders than I do line on the rod, on the reel. You don't put line on the rod unless you're dealing with a cane pole or something, as far as you know. Anyway, <coughs> suffix. This is Suffix Elite. This is one of the ones that I use quite often. A lot of my rods and a lot of my reels have suffix on there. Uh, I think it's good stuff. It feels good. It works well. It has a little bit of a stretch to it. It helps me sometimes, not all the time. But it's a good castable line. And that's, what, that's really what I like. I like line that comes off of the reel well. Suffix Elite. Comes off the reel well. I seem to think so anyway. Just saying. Who am I? I mean, I... <laughs> now, a lot of times I go worm fishing and a lot of what I do is wacky rigging or I will do a Texas rig setup. That's more me. That's more what I do. But when I do, you know, I guess it's like that beer commercial with the old dude with the beard. I don't always worm fish, but when I do, I like to use Sticko. And I do, I like to use the Stickos. Uh, they're Bass Pro Shops Tournament Series Sticko. It's a shorter worm. Uh, this is a three inch. I like using the three inch uh, because I have found on a lot of occasions that the others are overkill and, and I catch just as big a fish with this three inch one as I would a six. Now, braided lines. I have used a lot of braided line uh, in the last probably year or two because I recently have started using braid in general. Braided lines I've used quite a few, but I have not used expensive braided lines. I've used uh, Vicious. I've used PC Fun. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I bought some Strike King today because I want to try it out. Haven't tried this yet. So I'm going to try that out and see how that works. I've got a couple of different ones. I think I Yuzuri. I believe Yuzuria has one I've tried, and it works pretty good. Everything I've tried has worked pretty well. The Vicious tended to fray quickly, um, where the rest of the stuff I was using, even the PC Fin and all that, worked out really well. P uh, PC Fin Onyx and Lunker. I don't know if they make Lunker anymore. You'll have to check that out yourself, because I tried to buy some more and couldn't find it. All I could find was Onyx. Either way, there's plenty of braided lines out there. Do your homework. Try some on. See how it works. My thing is casting distance. I use a lot of lighter, smaller jigs and smaller baits in general. So I want something that can really blast something out there and I want uh, just like this uh, Contra here that I got from Strike King is eight pound. I'm gonna give that a try on one of these other reels I've got over here, these newer ones. Actually, I'm thinking about putting it on the old Fluger President. Not that you care which one I'm putting it on, but I thought I'd tell you. Because I thought we were that close. I thought we were tight. And I thought I could talk to you. Anyway, there you go, guys. That's all I wanted to show you today. Rods and reels and things like that. I will tell you that as I use them because I have such the massive variety of rods and reels all around here. And a lot of them came from flea markets and things like that that you can't buy anymore. So there's no real use in me showing you that. Unless I'm doing a video on it, then I'll show you. The only other thing that I generally use when everything that I've got here in front of me doesn't work I'm going to show you real quick. This is a case full of trout magnets of every kind you could think of. Sizes, jigs, you name it. Trout magnets. Okay? When nothing else works, a doggone trout magnet will catch something. Okay? And usually it's a crappie or a, a bluegill. I've even caught bass on trout magnets. And the big fish like little baits. It just works that way. Have I ever caught a trout on a trout magnet? No. I haven't. One day, one day, that might be a really good episode. Probably not. But either way, they work. So if you get a chance and pick up a bunch of trout magnets, you'll enjoy it. A little pocket size one you can keep with you in the glove box of the car or something like that. But anyway, there you go. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something from all of this stuff. Like I said, I'm not going to steer you in the wrong direction. If I'm using this stuff and it's catching fish, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. 
I'm just telling you what I use that works. Maybe what I use doesn't work where you're at. Maybe it does. Give it a try. You're never going to know unless you get out there and cast away. Cast away? Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale. Tale of a fateful trip. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Whatever the next one may be.